Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Sally Pinto and I'm from the Yonkers North, neighborhood naturally occurring retirement community. We launched back in January of 2020 and we're here to serve seniors 60 plus in Northeast Yonkers. We have lots of fun programs and activities and we also have a lot of resources for you as well. Our programs include meditation chair yoga, uh, body mind fitness, bingo, and any other programs that you might be interested in, like arts and gardening. We have our resource specialist, Alexis Smith, who can help you with finding services and activities out there for you, as well as our nurse, Barbara Simone, who can help answer your health-related questions. We're here for you, we're here for our community, and we look forward to seeing you in our programs. Enjoy. Hello, everybody. I'm Alexis Smith, the resource specialist with the Yonkers Mark. I'm here to help with application assistance, referrals for home delivered meals, and transportation services will be coming soon. We also um, offer Zoom activities and Zoom programs. And if you have any other questions or concerns, I'm here to help. Thank you so much and enjoy the program. Welcome, I'm Barbara Simone, registered nurse. I recently retired from Westchester County's health department as a public health nurse. I am now here to try to assist you with any medical, or preventive care issues. Enjoy this program and I'm looking forward to working with you. Thank you, hello, happy new year everyone. Welcome to our Healthy Living for Your Brain and Body program like Sally mentioned. Uh, my, number, my name is Jessica Flores and I am a community engagement manager and diversity specialist for the Alzheimer's Association, Hudson Valley chapter, and I cover the Westchester County territory. Um, so today uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, how uh, health, having a healthy lifestyle uh, affects our brain, how it improves our cognitive health. And so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So bear with me two minutes. And so here it is. So today during our time together, if you have any question, um, please, I encourage you to just write them down in the chat feature. At the end of the program, we are going to reserve some time for Q&A. So I'm also very happy to know that we have a, a group full of resourceful people. Um, and so we will be answering questions if we can, of course. Um, also, at the end of this webinar, you will be receiving an email. I don't know if it will be from Sally or C, but the email will contain a workbook for today's program and some links to articles that are gonna be helpful for you if you have someone, uh, a loved one with a disease, if you know someone that can use this information and also uh, information that's good for the general public as well. So um, I am also including a survey link in that email. I will so appreciate your time if you, if you are able to complete this survey. It's only a five minute survey. Your feedback is so important to us. We want to know what you think about today's webinar and also what other topics you might be interested down the road. So let's go ahead and get started today. By the end of this program, you will be able to identify the reasons for taking care of yourself as we age. We're going to list some strategies to help us age well in the following areas, which are cognitive activity, physical health and exercise, diet and nutrition, and so social engagement. And throughout the course of the program, you will be able to view short videos of experts in the field of aging and people who are finding new ways to make small changes that are going to add up and help them age well. So let's start by talking about the factors that contribute to how human beings age. 
There are some ways in which we age that we all have in common, and many of these are outside of our control. As older adults, for example, our hair typically turns gray, our skin wrinkles, and our eyes tend to focus less effectively while reading. As individuals, though, we each age somewhat differently, and how this takes place depends in part on our genetics. We are each genetically predisposed to age in a certain way. For example, I'm pretty sure you've, you've known or heard of some families that tend to live a long time aging well into their 90s or even longer. And other families tend to develop diseases that may limit their lifespan. And these things are all beyond our control. However, there are many aspects of aging over which we do have some degree of control. And these aspects of aging include the lifestyle or environmental factors associated with how we age. Even in families with genetic predispositions towards particular conditions, there are lifestyle and environmental interventions that may alter the course of those conditions significantly. So taking care of our health often requires that we step up and make a change. And we can start by adopting habits to potentially improve overall health. And these habits may help keep our bodies and our brains healthy as we age. Now uh, we're going to talk a bit about the brain and how it works. The brain controls all of our bodily functions, including thought and movement. It is the control center for our entire body. There are approximately 100 billion nerve cells called neurons in the brain, and they are structured like branches of a tree, like you could see in the slide, right? You could see it looks like a tree with the branches. And these branches create a network of pathways through which electrochemical signals are sent to form our thoughts, our feelings, and our memories. Alzheimer's disease progressively destroys brain cells as it moves through the brain, affecting more functions as it progresses. Today's program, we will not be diving in into Alzheimer's disease. I do invite you to join us for our two upcoming webinars in February and March, in which we'll be uh, touching the subjects on the 10 warning signs of Alzheimer's disease and understanding disease, understanding Alzheimer's disease and dementia. I encourage you to register and join us. We have known for years that the body and the brain are connected and that what is good for the body may also be good for the brain. Now science is able to tell us why this is true and what we can do to maximize our health. Much of the body-brain connection is due to the fact that the brain is nourished by the body's richest network of blood vessels. The oxygen and other elements delivered to the brain through the bloodstream keep our brain nourished. Each time your heart beats, 25% of the blood being moved goes to the brain. This is why keeping the body in good working order helps keep the brain fuel to do its work. As we age, there are changes that take place in our bodies and our brains, and many of these are to be expected as typical age-related changes, such as some decline in the ways our brains process information. In addition, however, there are some diseases that are more common as we age, and some of these impact brain function. Alzheimer's disease and other dementias result when the brain is compromised in some specific ways. Currently, there are no proven methods to prevent, cure, or even slow the progression of Alzheimer's disease, but there are habits that can help maintain or potentially improve overall health as we age. And these habits may also help keep our brain healthy as we age. 
And although this program isn't specifically about issues related to Alzheimer's disease or dementia, it is helpful to know some basic information about these conditions to understand how they relate to healthy aging and what we can do to help our brains and our bodies age as well as possible. Dementia is a general term that is caused by many different diseases, each with different symptoms. The symptoms of all these diseases have one thing in common. They compromise the way the brain works and cause a decline in memory or other brain functions that are noticeable enough to affect our everyday life. Although dementia and the diseases under this umbrella term are associated with aging, they are not a normal part of aging. If they were, everyone would develop them and we know that this is not the case. Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of dementia accounting for 60 to 80% of all dementia cases. Some of the risks of Alzheimer's include age, genetics, head injury, cardiovascular factors, and fewer years of formal education. And we will discuss some of these risks in more detail later in the program. So now we're going to explore uh, one of the four aspects of healthy living. And we're going to take a look at the most cor current research to tell us about changes that we can make in each of these areas that can help our body and our brain age as well as possible. And so as we touch on each area, think about how you can apply this research to your own life and consider how you can do what you enjoy make gradual changes and start now, regardless of your age. And whenever possible, think about how you can make changes that affect more than one area at once to maximize the health benefits of your habits. So we're going to start uh, by exploring the area of physical health and exercise. So there is quite a bit of research in this area of how physical activity affects our brain health. And many studies are indicating that engaging in physical activity is associated with a lower risk of cognitive decline. So many researchers say that if people had to choose one thing to do to improve their brain functioning, it should be exercise. And some evidence suggests that exercise may directly benefit brain cells by increasing blood and oxygen flow and by reducing other dementia risk factors such as high blood pressure, diabetes, and high cholesterol. However, there is no single recipe for what may work best. Most researchers believe that exercise should be regular and on the more vigorous side, but other studies also shown uh, benefits from mild activity such as walking. So on our first video, we're going to hear from Woodley and he's going to describe how he developed a new habit. It's surprising how you can easily build up habits of just taking 15 to 20 minutes out of your day to go down, hit the treadmill and just do it. Just do it, just get on it, put my headphones on, and just walk at a nice brisk pace for myself, build up a quick heartbeat, quick sweat, and it's amazing how quickly I can go from 15 minutes to 20 minutes, and then over time, 30 minutes, and over time, 40 minutes. Before you know it, you know, you're up to 45 minutes of walking, and even at a higher incline and also at a higher pace. And Again, it's all about incorporating habits and the choices that we make. Mm -hmm. And like Woodley just uh, mentioned, he said is just, just do it, right? Um, because there are times that I think that developing a new habit is the hardest part, right? But it can also happen surprisingly quickly. And progress comes with choosing to stick with the new behavior and of course, do something that you enjoy. And creating an exercise habit can begin with just 10 to 15 minutes a day of activity. 
the most important recommendation to be active um, and to incorporate activity that you enjoy so that you can continue to engage in it. So just stop and think for a minute. What is one small thing that you do to take care of yourself? There are times that we usually, you know, especially now uh, during these, these times where we spend more time at home, um, let's take the time to take care of ourselves, right? Even if it's a walk around the neighborhood, let's, let's do it. So if this is new for you, you want to start out small. Like I mentioned before, walk around your neighborhood a few times a week, take the stairs more often, or if you drive, park your vehicle a little further away from your destination than usual. And these little changes add up. And research shows that even 20 to 30 minutes of walking a few times a week can have health benefits, right? So we wanna participate also in cardiovascular activity regularly. This is going to increase the blood flow to our brain and our body, providing that additional nourishment that we need and research has shown that for most people, any additional movement is a positive change that can have an impact on our overall health. And so while researchers don't know exactly how exercise helps, many believe it has to do with the increased flow of oxygen and rich blood to the brain, right? To improve our health and the health of our, of our blood vessels, which improves our brain function. And exercise helps clear out the pipes and helps reduce the buildup of debris, like cholesterol in our vessels. Healthy blood vessels also strengthen the brain's ability to fight or tolerate diseases. So it's important that we um, take a good look at our physical activity. If you would like to have more recommendations on uh, guidelines for physical activity, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have also recommended guidelines for physical activity. And I will share um, that link for this website. Of course, we always encourage that you move safely to prevent injury, um, ask friends to join you. And of course, during this pandemic, that's going to look a little differently. If you do have friends join you, of course, observe all the safety guidelines in place uh, due to COVID-19. Of course, consider physical activities that may also be mentally or socially engaging. These are extremely important. You want to check with your doctor before you begin any new exercise. Right? We want to do things uh, safely. And so we want to make sure that we are communicating with our doctor to make sure that we do them in that way. And finally, remember that it's never too late or too early to start. No matter when you decide to start, your body and brain can still reap the benefits of exercising. So uh, don't delay and let's start now. Of course, other um, things that we can do is to stop smoking. Studies have found that smoking increases the risk of cognitive decline and may increase the risk of dementia. Avoid excess alcohol. Get adequate sleep. Getting enough sleep um, is extremely important being that inadequate sleep due to conditions like insomnia or sleep apnea can cause problems with memory and thinking. You want to avoid any injury to your head. Head injuries and falls can contribute to physical and cognitive difficulties. Be sure that you wear a helmet when riding a bicycle or playing sports that could involve a head injury. Studies have found that regular physical activity decreases stress, increases your ability to manage stress and leads to better overall mood. So you want to monitor your level of stress and you want to take action to minimize it. And of course, seek professional assistance to address anxiety, depression, or any other mental health concern that you may have. Be sure that you have informed all of your doctors about all the medications you take and have them reviewed by your primary doctor once a year. And you want to be an educated consumer, even when it comes to your physician. So find a physician that you trust and visit him or her on a regular basis. 
and follow up on all recommendations. This is one of the best things that you can do to maximize your health as you age. Growing um, evidence suggests that many factors that increase the risk of heart disease and strokes may also increase the risk for dementia. These include high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, and possibly high cholesterol. Although there is good research being done in these areas, more is needed. But here's what we know. Research has shown that an increase in the risk of cognitive decline and dementia among individuals with diabetes. Although diabetes has not been shown to cause Alzheimer's disease, there is a relationship between those who have diabetes and those who get dementia. Studies have also found that midlife obesity may be associated with an increased risk of dementia. Research done on treatments to reduce midlife hypertension suggests that they may also reduce the risk of cognitive decline. And studies have shown mixed results for the relationship between high cholesterol levels and dementia. We do know that a good cholesterol level is good for the heart. And what's good for the heart may be good for the brain. The best way to address these health concerns is to get your cardiovascular factors mentioned above, tested regularly, and work with your doctor to understand what the re these results mean for your overall health and be aware of changes from previous levels to help determine whether changes are needed to help you stay healthy. African-Americans, Latinos, and other ethnic groups that tend to have higher rates of high blood pressure, diabetes, and cardiovascular problems need to work closely with doctors to stay on top of any medical concerns, being that these ethnic groups are in a higher risk of developing dementia in the future. The next area that we are going to explore is diet and nutrition. And we are constantly reminded to eat well, right? To achieve heart health, to lose weight, or ward off diseases like cancer. But we often ignore the brain, which is our most complex organ. Just like the rest of our body, our brain is impacted by what we consume. And it's important that we feed it well, right? Again, we know that a healthy fueling of the body benefits the brain function, uh, but there are many differing opinions about what is the best way to eat to maximize our health. Research in the area of the relationship between diet and cognitive functioning is somewhat limited. And while scientists don't yet fully understand the complex relationship between nutrition and the brain, studies have shown that a healthy that having healthy eating habits can help reduce the risk of cognitive decline. Although the idea that a healthy diet can protect against cognitive decline as we age is not new, it is extremely significant, right? So research continues to demonstrate how powerful good dietary practices may be in maintaining brain health and function. And so, the Alzheimer's Association does recommend um, we have two diets, which is one called the DASH, which is a dietary approaches to stop hypertension and the Mediterranean diet. I can also include, um, I believe in that email that you will receive at the end of this webinar, I've included an article that speaks on these, um, on these two diets and why they are so beneficial for our bodies. And so I encourage you to take a look at that article. Now we're going to hear from Dr. Martha Claire Morris, and she's going to talk about a diet that has been shown to help people age in a healthy way. Let's go ahead. Foods that have been shown to um, lead to healthy aging would be uh, fruits and vegetables, and in particular, green leafy vegetables and berries, as well as limited intake of high fat food items that you get through high fat dairy and cheese and red meats, and also um, healthy vegetable oils. So this would be, olive oil would be a good example, have been shown to reduce your risk of heart disease as well as dementia. 
Mm -hmm. So like Dr. Morris mentioned, uh, we do have the Mediterranean diet, the DASH diet. So the Mediterranean diet uh, really focuses on eating fruit, vegetables, nuts, and grains, replacing butter with healthy fats like olive oil, limit our uh, consumption of red meat, uh, using herbs to flavor our food rather than salt, and eating fish and poultry at least twice a week. The DASH diet um, is also a heavy consumption of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, seeds, and legumes, little consumption of sweets and sodium. Um, and the MIND diet, which is um, a hybrid of the Mediterranean and DASH diet together, also gives an emphasis on berries and green leafy vegetable, vegetables, as well as other vegetables, nuts, beans, whole grains, uh, avoid red meat, butter, cheese, pastries, and sweets. Um, of course, we want to do everything in a way that just shows balance, right? We want to balance, have more intake of the good stuff and avoid uh, the things that are, are bad for us. So it's very interesting to see. So like I mentioned before, you will receive a link to that article, uh, which is uh, very interesting. And so uh, now there are simple ways that we can uh, do to adopt a healthy diet. Like we mentioned before, uh, the slide showed, I'll go back to it, what we can do and what we can avoid. And a healthy diet will help us increase our intake of important vitamins. Some research does show that vitamins such as vitamin E or vitamins E and C together, vitamin B12 and folate may lower our risk of cognitive decline. And this research has resulted in some suggestions that taking dietary supplements will lower your risk. Um, of course, you want to be an educated consumer like everything else. I always say you don't have to be a scientist to think like one. Right. As awareness of this disease grows, we see commercials on TV that claim um, that they have the newest supplement to beat Alzheimer's and dementia. And um, one of the biggest problems area of, of this claims of dietary supplements and foods that we can take to claim that be to be beneficial of Alzheimer's disease is that they are not approved by the FDA. And there is little to be known of their effectiveness, quality, and safety, right? So in the past five years, the FDA has issued more than 40 warning letters to companies illegally marketing over 80 products claiming to prevent, treat, or cure Alzheimer's disease, right? And so supplements are, are appealing because they are often presented as an easy solution. So before taking any dietary supplement or any product as part of your health, make sure that you talk to your doctor, right? Your physician can help determine the best approach. Disclose any substances you're taking to ensure they're not interfering with your medications. And you want to look for FDA approved treatments and you can visit www.fda.gov slash drugs to find out if a treatment has been approved. So you want to be an educated consumer, especially when it comes in the area of your health. And so now we're going to take a look at the research that is going ongoing in the area of cognitive activity. And cognitive activity is the term used for keeping our minds active. Anything that uses your mind in challenging ways is a cognitive activity and can possibly have short and long-term benefits for your brain. As you use your mind in new and challenging ways, your brain actually begins to form and nourish new pathways for connections among brain cells. The more pathways you have, the more nimble your brain is and the better able you are to guard against the effects of injuries or diseases that may compromise brain functioning. 
Studies have been done in which some people engage in cognitive activity by playing games or reading material that was challenging to them, right? So notice the key word, challenging. Those who kept their brains active in these ways could recall information that was recently learned and remember it later to a much greater degree than those who did not keep their minds stimulated through mental activity. However, we do not know all the reasons why staying cognitive engaged may be beneficial. More research is taking place today to further explore these questions. Research has also shown that engaging in formal education, classroom-based learning uh, given by a professional trained teacher in any stage of life will help keep your brain healthy and can protect your brain from developing dementia. Some researchers believe that this may be due to education creating a more robust network of communication pathways between neurons in the brain. And others believe that the difference has more to do with education levels being related to socioeconomic factors, which are correlated with risk for disease in general and access to medical care. So in the next video, we're going to hear from Dr. David Bennett, he is the director of the Rush Alzheimer's Disease Center in Chicago, and he's going to talk about the research in the area of cognitive activity. One of the most interesting factors is cognitive stimulating activities, which basically for us just means uh, mental processing of information. Um, it can be from a book, it can be from the radio, it can be a magazine, it can be from a lecture, it can actually be from watching TV. All of these things require processing information. And the old adage of, you know, use it or lose it is actually something that turns out, at least from the observational data, to look like it's true. So numerous studies now have shown that being more engaged um, in cognitively stimulating activities is actually good for maintaining cognition. And it's true in late life, and it's true in early life. And so what we recommend is that you start early, and if you're already late, start now. Mm -hmm. So how can we exercise our brains or keep our minds active? All right, some ideas are um, art and crafts, being that creative thinking is always a good way to keep our mind active. Using your creative skills on arts and crafts projects not only helps us keep our minds busy, but also our hands stay active, right? So this is extremely helpful as we grow older, right? Uh, we also have trivia games. They are fun and popular activities for people of all ages, uh, but they can be especially helpful for seniors who want to exercise their recall skills and engage with family or friends. In, if you live in an assisted living community or if you live at home, um, these games encourage sen seniors to think back on past events or facts that they've learned throughout their lives. So that can be beneficial as well. Completing puzzles is also another activity that can benefit and stimulate your brain function. You have Sudoku, right? So the, the key here is to really do an activity that challenges our mind, right? Not do something repetitive that we are accustomed to do on a weekly basis, right? So I encourage you to join. Um, I know the Yonkers Library offers so many wonderful programs. You have uh, chair yoga, you have, I know you have a vision board uh, program coming up. You have so many uh, programs available. I know that now we have to do things differently due to the pandemic and we want to continue being socially engaged. We are doing it in a different way, right? We're doing it virtually. So we're glad to have the resources and I'm glad that the Yonkers Library is actually offering these wonderful programs to the community. And the final area is social engagement, engagement or interacting with others in a social setting. There is the least amount of research in this area. However, 
there is some research that indicates that connecting with others socially may benefit brain health and may actually delay the onset of dementia. And those who are engaged with other people also tend to have reduced rates of mortality and disability, right? So researchers aren't sure how, why, or if social network networks may help keep the brain resilient against Alzheimer's disease. Some scientists say that the traits that enable people to build and maintain friendships act as a buffer against cognitive impairment. Regardless of the reason, we know people don't do well in isolation, right? Isolation is not good for anyone. So when people are feeling good about their social networks, they tend to make healthier choices in other areas of their lives. Of their lives. And there are a variety of ways that we can connect with one another. Um, again, we are doing it differently now to stay safe. And so if you have the resources and the ability to join these virtual activities, uh, please do so. It's extremely important. These will provide the greatest connection with those around you and keep you engaged. Sometimes you can engage in an activity that combines area of a healthy aging, such as when you take a walk with a friend or volunteer to, um, you know, I know now we're doing things differently, uh, but if once things do resume to their normality, you can volunteer in your community center, in your library, see how many ways that we can get involved um, and keep our social connection, right? We want to find a purpose in our lives, an activity or connection that gives your life a sense of meaning, right? So staying socially active may be important in maintaining your overall health. You can engage with others without any financial costs, right? Um, and some suggestions are getting together with family and friends. Um, again, we have to do it virtually, keeping the safety guidelines that we have in place. Um, but it's good to know that we can still maintain um, that connection and be active in our community virtually and participate in the programs that are being offered. Now, let's move along to the next slide. Now, when we pull all of uh, our four pieces together, each of the four components that we explored has potential benefits for physical and cognitive health, right? Research, uh, research however, suggests that combining activities in all four areas may have the greatest benefit in maintaining or improving our brain health, right? So every day we wanna incorporate uh, an activity that's gonna help our cognitive health, our physical uh, health, our diet and nutrition and social engagement. Incorporating all four of these aspects is going to give us the maximum benefit. In the next video, you're going to hear from Dr. Bill Thies, who um, was the senior scientist in residence in the Medical and Scientific Relations Department of the Alzheimer's Association. He um, has passed away since this video, uh, but he talks about a recent study that is making a difference in what scientists are able to tell us about healthy aging. Recently at the Alzheimer's Association International Conference, there was a study reported of the results of a large clinical trial that was done in the Scandinavian countries. And in this trial, they took half the people in the trial and they adjusted their exercise level, their diet, uh, their social engagement, uh, and their mental stimulation. They, they developed programs for each one of those variables uh, changed all of those for the people that were in the test group and the control group just lived as they had been. There is a tremendous benefit to doing studies where we make changes and observe after the fact. That's a much stronger study than just observing people and trying to make judgments um, after life has changed for them. To my mind, one of the things that this has done is it, it's changed the 
the force of uh, recommendation that we might make around uh, the benefit of these interventions for prevention of Alzheimer's disease or for brain health. And the fact is that I think it's moved it from possibly exercise, diet adjustments, social engagement, mental stimulation are useful to probably. And that's a big change and makes it easier for people to make those kinds of adjustments um, for the benefit of their future health. A recent study in Scandinavia tells us that when exercise diet, social engagement, and mental stimulation levels were increased to a prescribed level, fewer participants experienced cognitive decline. And scientists are now moving toward, toward saying that these interventions may make a difference. With more evidence emerging, they are able to say that they probably do a major shift in the messaging that reflects the research, right? So if you would like to receive more information regarding the US pointer study or the Sprint Mind study, um, you can please provide us with your email and we will get you that information. You also want to take a holistic approach to wellness as you age and consider your components, including the physical, intellectual, social, spiritual, emotional, and vocational areas of your life. You can make simple changes that will have uh, an effect, a positive effect, helping you live as well as possible. Right. And remember, it's never too late or too early to start living a more healthier life. So you want to begin today. You want to start small and build. Pick one area to start with and expand from there and take your changes step by step. You will also be receiving a workbook at, uh, at the end of the webinar. I encourage you to use it. It will help you track these small changes that you're making in your lifestyle. Of course, do what you enjoy to do, make healthier choices. Um, maybe perhaps making a plan helps you achieve them. So you want to go ahead and do that. Use your workbook to document your plan, keep track of your progress as well as the obstacles that may hold you back and, and the ways that you are overcoming them, right? So you want, to, you want to do that. You want to reward yourself for the small changes and overall progress. You want to get support from others. You want to engage in activities that have a social component. And most of all, you want to have fun, right? Make sure that you uh, pick an activity that is enjoyable and reward yourself for your success. That's extremely important. Aging can present health-related challenges that can take an emotional, financial, and physical toll. You can find many products out there, like we mentioned before in the market, uh, that claim that they are uh, you know, going the next big cure for Alzheimer's disease or any other disease out there. Like we mentioned before, you want to be a savvy consumer, make an educated decision, visit your physician before you start taking any supplement, even if it's a natural supplement, a vitamin, uh, make sure that you reach out to your doctor and make sure that it doesn't have a negative interaction with any other medication that you may be taking at the time. And no matter whether you want information or support, whether you have questions about memory loss or any other type of dementia besides Alzheimer's disease, or whether you are a professional, a researcher, a caregiver, or a person diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease or another form of dementia, the Alzheimer's Association has resources for you and we are available to help. In addition to our programs, we do have a website, which is alz.org. And in this website, you can get tips about finding and providing care, uh, read about the latest research, and find the tools for your well being. Right? You can uh, take the time to explore uh, the website, and you will find our Alzheimer's Navigator, our Community Resource Finder, which lists all our community partners and resources near you. 
We also have our caregiver center. If you have any questions, you can actually speak with caregivers that are going through uh, similar situations and you may have uh, that feel that, that connection and support. Of course, our 24 seven helpline, which is available all day, every day. And it's 1-800-272-3900. If you call that number any time of the day, you will have someone actually speak to you and they can connect you with the resources that you need. We also have support groups, education programs. Uh, we have music programs, art programs for people that are in the beginning stages of Alzheimer's disease and their caregivers, their loved ones who, is, who are providing the care for them. So we invite you to uh, please reach out if you have a loved one through the disease or you know of someone that can benefit from these resources, reach out to us by calling the 1-800 number um, and we will be able to connect you with any program um, that's going on now. And of course, if you would like to learn more about any other topic, you can uh, visit our training.alz.org uh, and it is a free online education program and it's available at any time where you can take any program at your own pace. And this is, of course, all, uh, all our services are completely free. So that's also important to know. And of course, if we encourage you, if you have any other questions to give us a call. Hi everyone, this is Z from Yonkers Public Library. Thanks so much to Sally Pinto and Alexis and Barbara from Nork. Thank you to our community partners, WJCS, the City of Yonkers Office for the Aging, Westchester County Legislator, Ruth Walter, Friends of Crestwood Library and Yonkers Public Library for making this phenomenal partnership. And we thank each and every one of you for being part of our wellness community. Be well, stay well.